Introduction by James W. Knox Greetings to each of you in the name that is above every name, the wonderful, glorious, beautiful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Word of God makes it abundantly clear that saved people, with the Holy Spirit living in them, with the best of instructors in proper fellowship, have a tendency to forget or to let slip even the most vital truths of the Christian faith. Consider carefully the following verses, and do try to think of them as needful for each of us. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. 1 Timothy 4, 6. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. 1 Corinthians 11, 24 and 25. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. 2 Thessalonians 2, 5. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. 2 Peter 3, 1. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. 2 Peter 1, 12 and 13. I will, for, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Jude 1, 5. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Philippians 3, 1. Thus old truths must remain new. Things taught and most surely believed must be constantly affirmed. The early dew of morning may pass away by noon, and our minds stand in continual need of renewing. The Lord gave his church many exceeding great and precious promises to a people who would be strangers, persecuted, cast out, misunderstood, reviled, imprisoned, and martyred for their faith in him, he made no sweeter promise than his pledge to come one day and receive his own into his presence. Called by some the rapture, by others the catching away, by another group our gathering together unto him. The Bible refers to this promise as the blessed hope. In every land, through every age, a few have held to the faith once delivered, while foes without and within have sought to subvert the confidence of believers in the promises of God. One of the truths so often abandoned is the saint's hope in the imminent coming of the Savior. One man lives in a land where political and social decay causes him to despair. Another falls into sin or callousness. Perhaps it is an unexpected prison term or a desire to contend with the authority of the church of which one is a member. It may be an over-awareness of governmental activities or a hypercritical attitude towards the motes, toward the motes in the eyes of others. For a variety of reasons, men throughout the centuries have decided that the church should stop hoping for the coming of her Redeemer and prepare for the wrath of God. Many unlearned and unstable souls find themselves more willing to heed an uncertain voice calling doom than the calm assurance of the Holy Spirit speaking through his apostles, prophets, and pastors, bidding God's children to keep their minds stayed on him. 
a new wave of writers have sought to infiltrate Bible-believing and fundamental churches with attacks upon the belief in that blessed hope. And those who hold to the promise, some weak in the faith are shaken by these doubtful disputations. Some who profess correct beliefs but cannot locate them in their Bible are taken in. Some good people and godly ministers come to see their inability to defend against unexpected attacks and find themselves looking for clear answers for those doting about questions and strifes of words. 1 Timothy 6, 5 and 6 Therefore, for the present distress, we put forth this volume defending the Christian's faith in that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13 We shall begin by reestablishing the basic truths about the church in Israel, the rapture and the second coming, the salvation of God and the wrath of God, etc. Next, we will use a book written against the blessed hope chosen because its author gives the most thorough catalog of arguments denying the pre-tribulation departure of the body of Christ to show the error of each and every argument raised against our confidence in the Lord's soon return. A number of trusted men have been asked to contribute to this work for the reason that answering all the empty, distorted, and unreasonable objections to the rapture raised by the author of the selected volume would have driven any one man to distraction if not despair. So we shall begin by showing what the Bible teaches about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ for those washed in his precious blood. We will then refute all objections raised against these truths. It is our hope and prayer that when we finish every reader will be fully confident that this could be the day we meet our blessed Savior in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Thank you, Lord willing, we will continue with the doctrine of the rapture in the next video.